Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to User Education. Um, we continue solving um, non-trivial, unusual problems. Unusual in the sense that it's not like the problem which is supposed to check your theoretical knowledge. It's just something which trains your brain, basically. So the purpose of the whole course, which I called Math Plus and Problems, is basically a training exercise for your logic, for your analytical uh, abilities, for your mind, for your creativity. Um, all the problems presented in this course are not really related in any kind of hierarchical uh, way. You just solve them one after another in any order. So we assume the theoretical knowledge sufficient to solve these problems you do have and uh, well if you don't you can always take the course mass for teens which precedes this one uh, and that gives you the foundation for all the mathematics needed to solve these uh, problems okay uh, today problem we will have only one problem today and i kind of like it because it's really it involves that's why I have only one problem for today, not like three, four, five, sometimes I have one problem, but we will discuss it in detail. So here is a problem. Consider you have a sum of fractions. So, starting from one half, all the natural numbers are in denominators, and we have some kind of fraction as a result. I mean, if we will sum them up together, get to the lowest common denominator, or uh, everything. My question is, <coughs> can it be an integer number as a result of all the manipulation, all the, the addition of all these um, fractions. Well, no, it's not. It cannot be uh, an integer number, and we have to prove it today. So, this is basically the problem. Prove that this is not an integer number, no matter what n actually is, for any n. For any n. By the way, a different way to write it would be sum from n equal to 2 to n, 1 over n. Okay, that's just another recording of the same thing, more compact, I would say. So it's not really important right now. What is important is how can we <coughs> prove this particular, well, theorem, if you wish, that this is not an integer number. It's not really kind of a usual problem which you have in regular course of mathematics at school. Um, so we need something unusual, some creative approach. And that's basically the purpose of solving all these problems which I'm um, offering. You need some creative approach. You have to think about how to approach this problem. And exactly the process of thinking and uh, finding the solution which is not the usual kind of solution, is what is supposed to help you in practical life to solve the practical problems <coughs> which always um, exist in front of you. So this has absolutely nothing to do with real life. It's purely artificial problem, but it trains your brain to think creatively. So I will suggest two solutions. Um, Okay, so let's start. I mean, first, obviously, you have to pause the video if you found this on the video somewhere on YouTube or whatever, and think about this problem yourself. And then continue listening to my solutions. And you might actually come up with your own, and I will gladly put it on, on the web, on unizor.com, with your authorship. So just send it to me as a solution. You have my email on every... Um, on every screen. Okay, so here is my first solution. 
among these numbers are numbers which have the form 1 over 2 to the power of k like 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 uh, eighth, 1 sixteenth, etc. So this is 1 over 2, 1 over 2 square, 1 over 2 to the cube, 1 over 2 to the fourth uh, power, etc. So let's choose the one which is the rightmost here. Somewhere here you have this. <coughs> now this is, well, since this is the rightmost, that's the minimum among all uh, numbers, uh, all fractions of this type, this is the smallest one, because it's to the right and our denominator is increasing. So the biggest k, where 2, when uh, 1 over 2k is still less, is, is still greater than 1 over n. Okay. okay, now let's think about how do we add all these numbers together. Well, we all remember something which is called least common denominator, right? So what is least common denominator? Well, the one of the ways basically to explain it is the following. Every number has certain prime components because every number can be represented as a combination of prime numbers. Let's say number uh, I know, 18 can be represented as 2, 3, and 3, right? These are all prime, prime numbers. Something like 65 is what? 5 times 13. Again, prime numbers. Now, then we take all the prime numbers from every number of these and compact them together without duplicating. So if you have already prime number here, 2, then you don't have to really one of these two. No, there are two prime numbers, two, right? Four times two. So we need at least two. We have only one. So we can have one from here, then one from here. Now from four, we already have two. So we take only one, two. Five is a prime. Six has two and three, so we don't really need uh, primes from three, from, from six, etc. So we combine them together, and that would be our least common denominator. So this is the number which is divisible by each one of these and the smallest number which can be divided by, by any of these. All right, <coughs> let's consider a simple case. Simple case would be, let's say, 10. Now, for 10, the least common denominator, what, what is it? So we need 2, we need 3, 4 has two twos, right? So we need an additional 2, so it's 2 square. 5, we need 5, because we don't have 5 as a prime number. 6, we need 2 and 3, we already have 2 and 3. 7, okay, 8, 8 has 2, 2 and 2, right? So we need the power of 3 here. Then 9 has 3 and 3. We have only one 3, so we need two 3s. And then 10 is 2 and 5. We already have 2 and 5. So this is the common denominator, least common denominator, and it's 25, 20. Now, how do we do the addition? Well, we assume that every one of these should be actually 25, 20 in denominator. So what would be numerator in this case? Well, we divide this by 2, so it would be um, 12, 60. 25, 20. One third, we divide by 3, it's 8, 40, etc. And the last one would be Divide by 10, it's 252 by 2520. I would like you to pay attention to one particular number here. 
the one which is one eighth. One eighth would be uh, here twenty five twenty, and one eighth would be three fifteen. <coughs> so this is one eighth. This is one tenth. This is one half. This is one third, and everything in between. Now, I would like you to pay attention to one imp important factor, that 315 is odd number. All others are even. And here is why. So, 1 8 is the biggest, uh, the 8 is the biggest denominator, which is the power of 2. Now, this is power the k is equal to 3 in this case. 1 8 is 1 over 2 cube. And we have 3 2's in our least common denominator, right? To satisfy 1 8. Now, all other numbers have less number of 2's in them. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they have 1 or 2. This guy has 2 2's um, but but no nobody except one eighth has three. We specifically chose one eighth as the number with na the, the greatest number of twos, which means when we will divide this well, uh, least common denominator by any one of these, we will still have at least one two left. If you, you divide by two, we will have two left. So it's still an uh, even number as a result. That's why it's even. If we divide by 3 this, 2 is not involved, so 2 will still be there, and this is <coughs> still an even number. By any other number we will divide except 1 8. We will have still some number of 2s um, left. But only if we divide it by the least uh, number of this type, we will have all twos exhausted and we will have everything else, all other prime numbers, and obviously all other prime numbers are all e uh, odd, so their product is odd. And that's why we will have odd numerator in this case. So, only in this case we will have an odd numerator. Now, we have some other, for example, what if we will have to a hundred. Right? What happens? If you will go to a hundred, obviously one after one eighth, we will have one sixteenth, we will have one thirty second and one sixty fourth, right? So here we need three twos. Here we need four. So the one with the greatest number of twos will be sixty four, which is uh, 2 to the 6th degree, and we will have 2 to the 6th here. And only this one will have all these 2's basically uh, cancel out when we divide by 64. Everything else would still have 1 or 2 or 3 or whatever number of 2's left and will be even. And only this one will be odd. So obviously this is a general rule that if we will take 1 over 2 to the power of k, which is the rightmost to this boundary, to the 1 over n, we will have only one particular odd numerator after um, applying uh, least common denominator. And all others would be uh, even. Now, if we have all even numbers and only one odd, their sum would be odd. Okay. So numerator of the entire thing, when we will add these numerators together, will be odd, but uh, denominator obviously is even, because there are twos in it. Now, odd number cannot be divided by even number to get an integer number, right? So if you have odd number x divided by even number, it cannot be some kind of uh, integer number, because integer multiplied by uh, even will, will get even, not odd. So that's the proof that this is not an integer number. 
And I would like to suggest another proof while I still, still have some time. Okay, this is the wrong marker. All right, so another thing is instead of looking for instead of looking for 1 over 2 to the power of n or k whatever I will look for denominator which is a prime number so there is a prime number which is the largest not exceeding n so 1 over so pn is a prime the largest prime number which is less than equal to our n, which is the end of our uh, series. And this basically solution is very much analogous to the previous one. So again, this is the rightmost fraction with the prime number in the denominator. Okay, so now, now I would like to to tell you that this prime number does not participate in any other denominator. Well, it does not participate in all those fractions which precede it because this is the largest prime number, right? And this is prime, so it cannot be um, uh, divide it, it cannot divide any of these numbers, so it's greater than these ones. So none of these is divisible by, by pn. How about those which are to the right of it? Well, that's very simple actually. Um, the problem is what is to the right of uh, pn? 1 over pn plus 1 1 over pn plus 2, etc., right? Now, what is the next um, number which is prime, actually? Well, the next prime number um, should be between this one and 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 the next right so what I would like to say is that if this is the largest prime number there is no more numbers after that which are divisible by pn why very simple case if you have 1 over pn what is the next number with denominator divisible by uh, pn obviously 1 over pn times 2 that's the smallest number which is closest to this one with the denominator still divisible by pn right now if this is the greatest prime number which does not exceed n I'm saying that this is impossible. Why? And here I would like to refer you to a so-called Bernard postulate. The Bernard postulate is this, uh, as follows. If you have some prime number, if you have some any number, let's say m, and the number 2m minus 2, there is always some prime number in between. Now, this was not really proven by Bernard. He just proposed this and checked this for mm, numbers from like from from two to I, I don't remember five million, whatever. 
but it was proven later on and it's not a trivial proof so that's why I'd like to use this Bertrand postulate as a given we might address it in some other case but if this is true then it is impossible for Pn to be the largest number prime number less than than n and still have this one why because between pn and 2pn well between 2pn and 2pn minus 2 uh, there is always another prime number so that prime number will be bigger than this one and still less than this one so if 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 pn is the largest prime number there is no other denominators divisible by pn that's what's important obviously there are no divisible by pn on the left but now i'm telling you that on the right from uh, from from this number to 1 over n there is also no numbers no denominators divisible by pn because the smallest one if it's still less than 1n um, I mean, this one, yeah. uh, well, actually greater than, the denominator is greater. Then, if this is the case, then we will have another prime number, and this will not be the, the largest prime number, not exceeding n. Okay, so, being done with this, everything else is simple. If pn is the only, if 1 over pn is the only one which has prime number pn in this in, in its uh, denominator, the least common denominator contains only one pn. So this least common denominator will be like 2 times 3 times blah blah times this pn times something else. pn would be represented only once to cover this particular denominator. Now, when we will uh, multiply this uh, to numerators and cancel out whatever is necessary pn would cancel out and you will have all prime numbers here and uh, we will have the pn for this one we will have pn present for this one because it will not cancel out with anything else or even after 1 over pn so all these would be divisible by pn except 1 and if all the numerators divisible by pn except 1 then we will not be able to divide uh, as a, as a, it, that, that the result of division of some of the numerators divided by uh, the common denominator will not be integer because in the numerator as a sum we will have everything divided by pn so it will be like a times pn times something which is not divisible by pn divided by something which contains lo uh, least common denominator which has many prime numbers including this one so this one cannot be uh, integer number because this is not divisible by pn if this is integer number let's say k then you will have on the right you will have k times something which is divisible by pn and this is not divisible by pn so again we have proven in some way it's a similar um, to the first uh, proof this one but it actually involves prime numbers and very important uh, theorem which I was just talking about the Bertrand's postulate uh, I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture they are more detailed and uh, also there are maybe some some other uh, more precise information which I for instance I have given very brief kind of example of uh, how to to do the least common denominator I, I have elabor elaborated this much more um, in the text for this particular lecture. And to get to this lecture, it's math for 
uh, mass plus and uh, problems, we choose arithmetic and this is arithmetic 02 lecture. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.